Hello and welcome back to another video. A common question I see online from beginners starting out with NeoVim or even coding in general is what distribution should I use? What is the best NeoVim distribution? And it turns out there's quite a lot of those out there and these are just some I randomly found by searching for NeoVim distributions. So today I want to answer this question for you and give you my little take. But of course, this is just my opinion, so take everything with a grain of salt. And the first thing I want to tell you is you don't actually have to make this big of a choice. You can just try out however many you want, and it does not have to change anything of your existing config. And the reason for this is NeoVim respects an environment variable called NVim app name, which you can just define in your shell session or your terminal. And then when you install a new distribution, which you usually clone their starting configuration into some directory, you just clone it into something of the same name. So you call it, for example, LazyVim to do a LazyVim configuration. And then when you open NeoVim and this NVim app name is defined, it will look for those places. And this is how I'm able to have all these different distributions set up at the same time and they don't interfere because they have all their own little folders for their config and their share and their state. And that means you can just go wild and explore and see what is out there. But what you do with this, I have sort of a different opinion. I don't think you should actually stick to any of those single distributions. I think you should go out there and see what's, what you like, take the plugins you like, and then build your own. And I'm going to explain why I think so. Uh, firstly, I want to discuss an interesting trend I see with those distributions. They all started out having a lot of custom code to manage your plugins and to manage your configuration and that kind of stuff. And then uh, Folky's lazy.nvim plugin manager came along and basically everybody started adopting it because it is just so well built and it is a project that is so mature now that it makes more sense to contribute to it yourself if you want to improve it instead of building your own plugin manager. And it is a very important piece of managing your configuration to keep all those plugins nicely organized. And because of this, it is actually fairly easy to take pieces from each individual configuration or distribution that you like and incorporate it into your own. You don't need to always take the whole thing. However, distributions do a bit more, right? They also provide some default configurations for certain plugins. And I want to talk a little bit about a general topic with regards to that. And that is abstractions. Now, as programmers, we abstract things all the time. You write a function for something you do a lot, or you want something to do something complicated, and then you wrap it in a function, and then you don't need to worry about the complicated parts again. As sort of like a real world analogy, we can think about a car, for example. Like this little otter does not need to know how a car engine works, and I assume this is how a car engine looks like. But because the manufacturers of the car gave this otter an abstraction, a way to interact with the car, like for example a steering wheel and a gas pedal, the otter does not need to care about how the engine works. You just press the gas and you know from your experience the car goes forward. So all you need to know is gas pedal makes the car go forward, brake makes the car brake. You don't need to understand how the engine actually works and this is a very useful abstraction. However, the abstraction can break down. For example, if your car actually breaks down, you don't know how the engine works, so you need to go to a mechanic and they can then fix your car. Now, it would be annoying if you had to go to a mechanic every time your code editor changes or you want to make some changes to your code editor. And this is where we get into this concept of leaky abstractions. The whole idea of an abstraction is you have some complex system that you want to encapsulate with something simpler that you can then interface with. Uh, but sometimes the complications can leak out, which means in order to properly interact with the abstraction, you need to know some details of the implementation of the inside. And sometimes this can be quite an annoying experience. Say, for example, you're using a NeoVim distribution and you want to make some changes to your own custom configuration. You want to add some maybe custom key bindings, some custom functions, you want to add a plugin, and then stuff does not quite work. It almost works, but doesn't quite work. And this is because no abstraction can encapsulate the whole complexity of a system. And then the complexity leaks out. And this can then add even more layers of complexity because you need to learn how those systems interact with each other. 
And this is why I think for when it comes to configuring your code editor, it is better to instead stop shoveling water. Actually, I should have moved this text somewhere, right? So in other words, I think there's no wrong choice when it comes to NeoVim configurations. You can just try out all of them, take what you want, and then incorporate it into your own configuration, which I advise you to actually start from scratch. Or take one of those starting points like kickstart.nvim by DJ and the corresponding video to learn about it. And you go through line by line and actually learn how the underlying systems work. And then you can take it a step further and watch, for example, my video on adding data science features to this kickstart configuration. Now doing so is a bit more work up front, but it will save you a lot more work in the long run. And then lastly, the beauty of NeoVim is that you can configure it however you want, which means you can really make it your own. And actually the, the mug I'm currently drinking from is from my local climbing gym, which has a saying on it in German, which says, zu Hause ist doch am schönsten, which you could roughly translate to, and after all, home is nicest. So go ahead, go out there and explore all those cool distributions, find out the cool plugins they use and the tricks they use. But then you come home and you learn how to swim and you make your home nice. That's all from me today. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.